In this video I want to chat about the 8 things that I loved about the KLR650 over the Honda XR650L. Hi, I'm Francois from AdventureBikeTroop.com where we chat about bike riding, maintenance, travel tips and more. If you are new here, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Now I've owned two Kawasaki KLR 650s. I've had a Suzuki DR750 Big, BMW 650, uh, Yamaha XTs and now the Honda XR650L. Now I've only had this bike about two months so I haven't done much uh, riding. I haven't toured with it yet and this video I just want to chat about the eight things that I loved about the Kawasaki KLR650 over the Honda XR650L. Now there's a lot of things I like about this bike but we'll chat about that in a separate video. Now before you comment and say these bikes are not comparable let's put some specs on the screen. Now they are both single cylinder 650cc dual sport bikes from Japan so I'd say they are directly comparable. Yes, the XR is more dirt orientated than the KLR, but the KLR is not exactly a, an adventure bike. It's not great on the highway or not that much better than the XR. And the XR is not exactly a dirt bike or an enduro bike. It's still very heavy. So I'd say they are direct competition and they were they sold for more or less the same price. They've both been around for decades. And they both have carburetors, same size wheels, so I'd say they are direct competition. Now the number one thing that I loved about the KLR650 over the XR650L is that it had a cush drive on the drivetrain. Now that protects the drivetrain from uh, the, the lash or when you pull away and it smoother gear changes. Um, but apart from the comfort, what I like about it is that it will protect the gearbox and the sprockets and the chain. I'm worried that the, the drivetrain is going to wear prematurely on this bike without the cush drive and you know uh, the, the counter shaft is a problem on the XRs and with the thin sprocket and this one's already a bit worn after 14,000 kilometers. I have fitted a very thick XR650R sprocket um, but still without the cush drive it is going to wear uh, sooner. The second thing that I love about the Kawasaki KLR650 Kawasaki KLR650 over the XR650L is the gearing. Now the, the second gear is very far from the first gear on the XR and it's very uncomfortable when you're riding slowly. I have to ride 30 kilometers per hour or 20 miles per hour in second gear for quite a stretch to get on the main road and it's very annoying because the second gear is just a little bit too tall and here playing around it's always constantly between first and second on the clutch um, and I've already gone from a 15 front sprocket to a 14 tooth front sprocket but it's still slightly too high and I remember the KLR I was in second gear a lot of times on the technical roads um, and it was fine the gearing was much better spaced. The third thing that I love about the Kawasaki KLR650 over the XR650L is that it's liquid cool. Now here you can see I'm sweating already and it's uh, it's 8 o'clock in the morning uh, it's, or, it's already above 30 degrees Celsius uh, it's going to be 38 today, it gets up to 45 in the summer, so with the uh, air cooled uh, you have to be more careful, especially with slow technical riding and go in the desert, we've toured Namibia a couple of times, on the Kawasaki it's fine because you've got liquid cooling, so you're less worried about overheating the engine. Now I have sorted out the jetting on this bike, it was lean as they all are from factory, so that should help a bit, but there's just less worries with the liquid cooling. Um, it is, there's more that could go wrong, that's one uh, advantage of the air cooling, but how much effort is it to check your coolant and make sure the fan is running? Now the fourth thing that I love about the Kawasaki KLR650 over the XR650L is that it got, it's got a detachable rear subframe. So if you break the subframe or something happens, you can just replace the subframe in the back. Um, now you have to make sure that you've got uh, strengthened bolts in there, that's one of the, the weak points of the, the subframe bolts. But uh, still, if something breaks, and I've seen frames broken on the KLRs and on the XRs, now it's easier to just replace the subframe instead of the whole frame if it's a one piece like the XR. 
Now the fifth thing that I love about the Kawasaki KLR650 over the XR650L is the bigger tank of the KLR. That's one of the reasons I bought the KLR. Um, it had a 23 litre tank. I think that's about 6 gallons or 5.8. I don't know. Um, but the range was at least 400 kilometers or sometimes up to 460 kilometers um, before you run out. Whereas on this 10 litre tank or 2.8 gallons, after about 100 kilometers or 60 miles, there is, it goes to reserve. Um, so that's not great for touring. I'll have to get a bigger tank before I go on a tour. Um, but that's nice about the Kawasaki that's got that tank as standard. And also the fuel economy of the KLR was much better than the XR. I could get 23 kilometers per liter, whereas this thing gives me 15. <laughs> the sixth thing that I love about the KLR 650 over the Honda XR 650L is that it's got the rear luggage rack with the toolbox in it. So you can just strap your bag or your tents on the rear, it's got a longer seat as well, so it's much easier to fit your luggage uh, without any uh, aftermarket racks or uh, anything. So here you're going to, if I have to fit saddlebags here, it's going to go into the muffler, so I have to fashion some type of rack. With the KLR you just throw over the saddlebags, put the tent and your uh, box on the back and you're ready to go. Now the seventh thing, and now we're getting into uh, nitpicking, but the seventh thing I like about the KLR 650 over the XR 650L is that it's got a much fancier dash. I mean, it's got a rev counter. I think that's the only extra thing. Well, it's got a rev counter, and uh, it's, it's silly, but I just like to see what the engine speed is. <laughs> and with these bikes, you have to red, redline it often to keep up with other bikes. So it's nice to know that uh, when you are reaching that red line. And then the last thing, it's maybe it's an advantage maybe not but one thing i liked about the klr 650 over the xr 650l is the seat height is much lower this is 37 inches it's one of the tallest 650 dual sport bikes um, and for me i have to tiptoe it i'm about six foot uh, six foot and a half an inch um, and i'm not very strong the KLR was just much easier to manage even though it's much heavier than the xr i like the ground clearance that it offers but I must admit, I am a bit uncomfortable when I have to turn around in tight spots. And even now, when I drive up here, you'll see, um, yeah, it's it's a bit uh, shaky with this high seat height. So those are the eight things that I like about the KLR650 over the XR650L. They are both great bikes. There's a lot of things that I love about the XR over the KLR. Things that I prefer. Um, so if you have any of the two bikes, the KLR650 or the XR650L. Please comment below and let me know what you love about the bike and subscribe to this channel and give it a thumbs up. See you next week. Anyways, thank you for joining us. Um, I'm just going to ride up there and I'll, then I'll come and uh, get the camera down here.